and for this week's YouTube video I thought we would talk about ACE inhibitors or ARB inhibitors, the blood pressure medicines, and the pharmacology around them and how they work at actually lowering blood pressure. And to understand this pharmacology and these medicines mechanism of action, you need to understand the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone uh, system or the RAS system. And in this system, it is very complicated if you look at it because there's many different organ systems that play a role in it. Mostly it is involved in the kidneys where when the kidneys recognize that, hey, uh, the body's blood pressure system is a little low and they, the kidneys measure this by the um, GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. And when this drops a little bit, uh, that's when our blood pressure is a little low. And when it drops, it signals the kidneys to produce something called renin. And this is a hormone that um, gets converted by something called angiotensinogen, which is produced by the liver. So the liver produces this enzyme called angiotensinogen. It produces and converts renin into angiotensin 1, which is um, another hormone that will be converted into angiotensin 2 by another enzyme from the lungs. And um, after it gets and that's the enzyme called ACE. And after angiotensin 1 gets converted to angiotensin 2, um, from that ACE enzyme that's produced in the lungs, then angiotensin 2 has three main properties in to raising the blood pressure. So it all starts with renin that gets produced from the kidneys when the blood pressure is low. Then it gets converted into angiotensin 1 by that uh, enzyme from the liver called angiotensinogen. And then angiotensin 1 gets converted to angiotensin 2 by the ACE enzyme that is produced from the lungs. And finally, when it's in to a angiotensin 2, it actually has the properties of raising blood pressure. And it does so in three different ways. One, it increases thirst um, in the body. So when you're thirsty, your angiotensin 2 is uh, coursing through your body saying, hey, you need to drink water because for whatever reason, your blood pressure is dropped, whether it's been from diffuse nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, um, or if you just haven't drinking in a while, your blood pressure is dropping and you need to drink some water. And um, so it tells you that you need to drink. So it creates a thirst sensation. Uh, and then it also works directly on the arterioles in the body and vasoconstricts them. So when you're vasoconstricted, you have a higher velocity going through those arterioles, thus increasing your blood pressure. And then the last thing it does is it works on your adrenal glands. And what it does is increases the aldosterone that um, what work directly again on the kidneys and it forces water reabsorption through sodium reabsorption. So it's, it's kind of this osmotic reaction that happens in the kidneys when aldosterone is increased. So after all of those three mechanisms, your blood pressure should increase. Now, ACEs and ARBs, those blood pressure medicines, block certain areas in the body that increases your blood pressure. Thus, angiotensin 2 cannot work. But let's take a better look at the RAS system here in this diagram. So here is a good look at the RAS system. So again, like I was talking about before, there are many different organ systems that play a role in this system, but it all starts with the kidneys and ends with the kidneys. So the kidneys recognize that there is a drop in blood pressure or a drop in fluid volume causing a drop in blood pressure. And then the kidneys are like, oh no, I need to create some renin. So renin's released from the kidney and for renin to work effectively, it needs to move to angiotensin 2, which has all those three properties that work on the rest of the body to raise blood pressure. But uh, renin needs to be converted to angiotensin 2, and the first part of that process is the conversion from renin to angiotensin 1. And this is done by angiotensinogen, which is produced by the liver. So after it has been converted into angiotensin 1, it then needs to be converted to angiotensin 2. And 
This is done with the ACE, the angiotensin converting enzyme released from the lungs. And when ACE converts angiotensin one into angiotensin two, it can go and do those three actions that I told you. Now, thirst isn't really shown here in the diagram, but angiotensin two does work on the adrenal glands to produce aldosterone, which thus does the osmotic reaction of increased reabsorption of salt and then water follows. And the other thing, angiotensin II acts directly on the blood vessels, the arterioles, and vasoconstricts them. So if you think about looking at this diagram and how ACEs and ARBs of the blood pressure medicines work, an ACE inhibitor, so if you are inhibiting the ACE enzyme, then you are going to stop the angiotensin one to angiotensin two conversion. And if you stop that conversion, then angiotensin II is not able to do those three mechanisms to raise blood pressure and therefore blood pressure will be more stable and used for hypertension. ARB inhibitors, so it's angiotensin receptor blockers, so there's certain receptors and the adrenal gland and the arterioles. And if you block these receptors, then angiotensin II has nowhere to bind. And therefore, you'll have angiotensin II, but it'll have nowhere to bind. And therefore, it will not raise blood pressure and therefore can be used in high blood pressure. I hope that chart was helpful. Uh, that's the chart I used in school to really wrap my brain around this whole process. Uh, it obviously does get more detailed and intricate, but I think if you understand the basis of that chart, then you can delve more deeply if you so desire or if it helps you to understand it better. But uh, when I studied this chart, that's all I really knew. And um, that really helped me get through school and understanding the mechanism of action of these drugs. So these drugs, ACE inhibitors, um, they are going to end in pril, like lisinopril is a very common one. Um, and again, those are the drugs that are going to block the ACE enzyme conversion from angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Um, or you can have ARB inhibitors, and these are drugs that end in a sartan, so losartan. Uh, and these drugs are going to block the receptors and make it so that angiotensin II cannot bind and do those three mechanisms that increase blood pressure. And there's also been a lot of speculation about ACEs and ARBs being used in the current corona virus uh, hysteria. And right now it's still under research. Um, and there's no definitive reason to use one versus the other. Right now, if people are already on those medicines to treat their high blood pressure, we recommend just keep prescribing them through their treatment of coronavirus. Uh, but the coronavirus comes into and infiltrates cell membranes through those uh, ACE receptors. So there is some sort of study going on that if we can block these receptors, then there could be some sort of play of using ACEs and ARBs in the treatment of coronavirus. But like I said before, there is no clear research right now, nor formal recommendation at this time. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you understand uh, that whole system and how complicated it can be. But really breaking it down and looking at diagrams was the best way I learned this system and how the hypertensive meds that are so common work eff effectively in our system. So if you like this video, press the like at the bottom of the page. And if you like all our videos, subscribe to our page. See you next week, guys. Mm -hmm.